Hi guys, I'm Colleen, I'm from Google. I've been with Google for exactly one year and one day, actually, yesterday was my anniversary. Thank you. <laughs> um, and I work on a team that specializes in open source integrations with Google Cloud Platform. Um, so you might have seen my work on the GCP service broker, but today I'm here to talk to you about a new integration that we're exploring. Um, so this is under development, but still very much in flux, still um, looking for a lot of feedback in terms of is this a, a product that's going to be useful and helpful to you? Um, what features would you need? What direction would you want it to go? Um, so definitely looking for a lot of feedback uh, at the end of this session. But so we're gonna talk about the work that's planned and, uh, and started right now, integrating uh, G Suite, or which you might also know as Google for Work, with Cloud Foundry uh, authentication and permissions. So I'm just gonna level set on some uh, acronyms just to start with. So UAA uh, is user accounts and um, authorization, authentication, authentication. <laughs> um, and this is a default uh, that ships with Cloud Foundry for um, managing your user logins. Um, however, in terms of most of the permissions that your user, your Cloud Foundry developers um, are gonna use day to day, those are managed through the Cloud Controller APIs, uh, which is commonly abbreviated as CAPI. So these are two distinct systems. Um, you add a user through UAA as well as through CAPI, but then managing uh, the different sets of permissions um, or different uh, pieces of information. You have to go from one system to the other. So this does pose some limitations um, and make, can make some things a little more difficult to administer. So having worked in an enterprise organization before, um, we know that onboarding and just permissions day to day can be hard and complex. So there's a situation that I thought uh, some of you might be able to relate to. So let's say Nancy's a new developer at your company. Um, so your HR person uh, will add an entry for her in his tool, which is usually synchronized to another system uh, so that she can get her G Suite account all set up. So she gets a, an email address and logs for those actions will go into his tool and into G Suite. Um, and then you're gonna have a sysadmin who's gonna use a different system probably to, to add Nancy to some LDAP groups because um, you might have other uh, health and benefits systems that are connected that'll pull that information in. Um, so then logs for that action will just go into the LDAP server. And you know, during onboarding, you get that document that says, has the checklist of everything that you should have permission to, that you should set up your system with. Um, so during her onboarding, Nancy is gonna find, oh, I need to have a Cloud Foundry account made for me, and I need to uh, have access to these orgs and spaces that my team's gonna work on. So then Nancy will probably go to her PM, and her PM will create her an account, um, and maybe add, add her to everything that Nancy requests. But, those documents are never complete. <laughs> so um, a few weeks later, Nancy's gonna find something that was left out. Um, and she's probably at this point just gonna go to her team lead and her team lead will be able to give her access directly through CAPI to whatever spaces or orgs she was missing. Um, and again, these logs are continuing to be kind of scattered across the disparate systems. So uh, the logs that went into CAPI uh, are only there and then the logs from the team leads actions might need to go into uh, both systems. And then say a year later, Nancy switches projects. So she doesn't wanna get the spam from her old uh, team Google groups anymore. So her old PM removes her and her new PM goes through the and team lead go through the same set of actions or they're kind of adding things in different places, um, but it's very <laughs> uh, reasonable to think that um, somebody might forget to remove her access to her old orgs and spaces. So you're kind of left with um, the logs are scattered across 
these different systems. Uh, the actions are very disparate. Um, and so it can just be kind of hard to track what's going on and where and make sure that the permission structure is as it should be and gets propagated through all areas of the system. So we tried to come up with a workflow that would be more consistent. So it starts in the same place. Uh, Steve still adds Nancy to the HR tool and that propagates to G Suite. This diagram, <laughs> I know, kind of looks complicated, so I'm, I'm gonna walk through it. Um, so we've added a couple things here. Um, there's something known as Google Cloud Directory Sync. That's the box uh, to the right of the LDAP box. And so that's gonna pull from the LDAP server and propagate LDAP groups as Google groups into G Suite. And then the application that I'm working on is simply labeled sync next to G Suite. Um, and that's gonna do a very similar thing, pull from G Suite and propagate to both CAPI and UAA. So this step two, where uh, Nancy sysadmin adds her to the LDAP server, actually kind of takes care of some of the other steps. So her PM no longer needs to create her an account and add her to orgs and spaces now. Uh, the LDAP groups will take care of that themselves. Uh, so they'll get synced into G Suite and then synced into both systems. And then the logs for that will be consistent because they'll be both available in the sync applications as well as in each of the individual systems. So if you're looking for a complete uh, set of actions, you can go straight to the sync system to look for everything together. And then again, when the permissions need to be updated, you don't have to go into the individual systems. Uh, Nancy's PM can just add her to a new Google group, and that'll take that same set of actions to add her to the appropriate orgs and spaces or give her the appropriate permissions in uh, CAPI or UAA or both. And then you get the nice consistency of when Nancy switches teams, her PM removes her from the Google groups that corresponded to her old team, and that'll propagate that set of permissions through so that you can be sure that only the people who are supposed to have access to those orgs and spaces are the ones that do. So as I said, this is the solution. So this is the sync that is uh, under active development, pulling from G Suite into UAA and CAPI. And I'll, um, in a second, uh, walk through that in a little bit more depth. And then these I included um, just because they are so common, but they are kind of optional add-ons. Um, so single sign-on uh, via OpenID Connect is available right now. Uh, with UAA, um, so that makes a lot of sense to add. And then this uh, Google Cloud directory sync kind of gives you the full workflow from um, LDAP to uh, single sign-on and all of these permissions uh, propagated throughout your system with consistency. So the way that you would use this application is you just do a config before the application runs to create a mapping of your Google Groups to a set of uh, roles, orgs, and spaces within Cloud Foundry. So for example, you could have a like finance devs group that maps to you should have um, space developer in the finance org and a uh, finance dev space or something. And then when the application first starts, it's going to read that mapping and do a sync, um, both to make sure that it's caught up on users and groups that exist within Google and to make sure that it's caught up on that config. So it's gonna read everything from uh, Google, diff it with everything in Cloud Foundry, and then apply the appropriate transformations. And then just during the course of normal application running, um, there's gonna be a listener so it'll listen for actions taken in G Suite, things like adding members to groups, um, disabling somebody's access, uh, and then transform those into individual uh, actions to apply to Cloud Foundry. 
So I just have a quick demo of um, the user import functionality. So I have a G Suite account set up, and you can see I have two users there. Um, but in my Cloud Foundry users list, there is only one entry, and that's my admin user. So I'm just gonna just run the program so you can see it's pulling users from Google, and it found these two right here, um, pulled in their information, pulled users from Cloud Foundry, only found one, uh, which was the admin user, so it knows that it's missing these two users and needs to add them to Cloud Foundry. So if I come back out and get my users list again, now I have that admin user, but I also have my Colleen user uh, and Dana somewhere in there. I have uh, three total results now. Um, so this is a pretty quick talk. Uh, to be honest, this is all that I have to present to you right now. So I would love to take any questions now or uh, I'll just stick around afterwards if this sounds interesting. Um, again, this is very much up to the community to see um, what kind of features you would need. So come talk to me. Does anybody want to ask any questions now? Okay. I'm just going to hang out over here. Thanks. <laughs>